money. Go. All right. So yesterday we looked at Reagan. Reagan became an engineer. She was hired by DuPont. First job, suburb of Atlanta. She loved it there, had a very nice apartment and making lots of money. She worked there two years until she basically completed the project. Then her boss came up to her with an offer that she could not refuse, which literally really was an offer she could not refuse. If she did, she would be fired. Mm -hmm. And that is to move to the suburb of New York City. And she got excited, first of all, because she loves New York City. She loves visiting New York City. But then she started thinking, okay, I've got a really nice lifestyle here in Atlanta. Uh, I know that they will accept my dollar bills there. So my payment that I get from DuPont is usable in New York City. The only difference is, what is the cost of living like in New York City? So she gets on Google and she Googles cost of living differences and a chart comes up, says, um, the city that you now live in, she puts down Atlanta. The city that you're moving to, she puts down New York City. And then she begins to cry because she's not making that much more money. And it is significantly more expensive there. So instead of having a three bedroom, two bath apartment, she now has a one bedroom, one bath, and she's paying three times more. Mm -hmm. And I am not exaggerating. That probably is the case. Okay. Whereas she, on her way to Chick-fil-A, on her way to work, she would stop by Chick-fil-A every morning and get some breakfast for $3. Now she's going to have to spend $7. Nevertheless, Reagan gets used to it. There is a little bit of a bump in pay, not much. And she just has to dip into her savings a little bit, but she enjoys it. She enjoys being near New York City. There's so much to do. And uh, she gets used to it. Two years later, boss comes up to her. He says, Reagan, you've done a great job. I think we're working, this, this system is working really well. I've got a proposition for you. Which in engineer talk means you take it or leave it. Okay. The proposition is we want to move you to Sheffield. She goes, Sheffield, where is, where in America, Sheffield? I'm sure that there is a town somewhere in America called Sheffield, but he's not talking about America. He is talking about England, Sheffield, England. So you got to move, not just from one state to the other. You now have to move to another country. Okay. So what are the things that she's going to have to take in consideration? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. There are international uh, websites where you can put down uh, New York City, USA, Sheffield, England. And you're going to find, Reagan, that the cost of living is actually a little bit better. There's not many cities that are more expensive than New York City. Yes. Ah, that's the big. She can take all of her money to England, and she's going to have trouble everywhere she goes if she tries to pay with American dollars. Because for the moment, due to Brexit, if you don't know what Brexit means, uh, you need to look it up. Uh, due to Brexit, for the moment, England has two currencies, the pound, the English pound, and the euro. The English pound and the euro. The dollar is not one of them. So before she leaves, she's going to have to go buy a bank and have all the cash that she has on hand. I mean, you've got a debit card, and credit cards are really nice because they'll do that automatically. But if you want to have any cash, uh, she's going to have to go and take all her cash and have it converted to pounds. So she goes to the bank, 
and there she sees this little old lady with blue hair. I don't know why she has blue hair, but I've noticed in some old ladies, I think they're going for the platinum look, and somehow it ends up looking blue to me. So she, there's this little blue-haired lady, and she has a southern accent in New York City. And you don't know why, but you just go with the flow. Oh, well, dear, yes. Yeah, what can I do for you? Yes. Oh, to English pounds. Oh, yes, of course, we can do that. Here's the exchange. For every one mole, we'll give you the formula mass of that country. And Reagan goes, what in the world is she talking about? <laughs> so you just, you're in a hurry. You just nod your head. You figure that she knows what she's talking about. And she gives you a bunch of English pounds. Okay. So you get on the airplane and you fly to Sheffield. And there you really, you, you get off and you can pay with stuff because you have English pounds. You have a great time there. Um, can you do me a favor? Can, I, I would like, you know, you're going to be given, like, weekends off. Can you please go visit Stonehenge for me? Okay, good. How about Cardiff, where they filmed Doctor Who? Can you go to Cardiff for me? I, I hear that Ireland is also beautiful in Scotland. So maybe on long weekends, if you've got, like, a long weekend off, you can go and visit Ireland and Scotland and take pictures for me? Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're very nice. Um, two years down the line. They come to her and they say, well, mate, you've done a wonderful, wonderful job here. I, yes, I can't do an English accent. Uh, you've done a wonderful job. Um, we'd like to move you now to Brussels. Ooh. Yes, where they make sprouts. Belgium. Oh. To my understanding, Belgium is actually the place where French fries were originated. Not in France. One less reason to have respect for the French. So, you are moving to Belgium, but here's the situation. Uh, DuPont is not ready for you there, so you're going to be given a month off, and uh, they're going to, in order to help you get there, they're going to give you a whole month's pay extra. Reagan. Okay, now let's think about it. You've got a month with nothing to do. Okay? And you have a whole month's worth of pay you were not expecting. What are we going to do? No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Christmas had just gone by. You just came back from America. The one thing you've been regretting because you've been working so hard is that you have not had a chance to visit Europe. We're going to Europe, baby. Okay, she wanted to go to Spain. She wanted to visit France, Germany, Italy, and Greece. Greece because of me, because I asked her, please, there's so many historical sites. You've got to go to Greece. So... You've got a bunch of English pounds. You want to take the tunnel and go and take your English pounds to France? Maybe not. What should you do with your English pounds before you go to France? Two? Well, what currency do they not only use in France, but in Spain and Germany? and Italy, and, okay, think of Europe as kind of like being America, in that they, at one time they used to have their own currency, but now they have one universal currency, and that is the euro. At, believe it or not, when our colonies were just colonies, each colony had their own currency, but once we became a country, we standardized, okay? So, she goes to France, enjoys her time there, realizes, wait a second, things are far more expensive here. Forgets that she needs to take consideration the cost of living because you have only a month's worth of pay, so you need to be careful. Okay, so she goes to Spain. After she takes into consideration that things are a little cheaper in Spain, 
and that allows you to pay a you know uh, spend a little bit more. You, you you get a boyfriend there, but you ditch him after two days. <coughs> How much time do you think she has? Okay, so she goes to Germany, finds a boyfriend there, ditches him after three days. <clears throat> goes to Italy, finds a boyfriend there, keeps him, pays for his way to Greece. Everywhere she goes, she gets on Google to figure out how much is it going to cost me because she doesn't want any surprises. Greece in particular has a very bad economy, so they it actually was cheaper to go to Greece. She was able to spend more money, but now at the end of Greece, she knew that the month was over, so she ditches her, her Italian boyfriend in Greece and flies over to Brussels because that's just the kind of girl she is. <laughs> Once she gets to Brussels, Brussels is a... a is unique along with England. There's no talking, right? Brussels is unique along with England in that they accept the euro, but they also are quite proud of their own currency, which is the franc, and they use the francs as well. So you get there with a bunch of euros in your in your pocket. You uh, go to pay for the apartment with your euros, and you notice that the apartment manager kind of does this. He looks down on you. Like, and you're going, what? what's going on? You go shopping for some groceries, and the clerk, when you go to give them their your, your euros, he kind of looks down on you. It's like, what's going on? So you go to work, and you make a friend. You go, everywhere I go, people look down on me when I go to pay. Is it because... I'm an American? She goes, no, no, no. It's just like, we're, we look down on tourists. We don't like tourists here. And, uh, and if we're, and if you're paying with euros, we just figure that you're a tourist. So the best thing you can do is go and convert all your euros to francs. So what you do is you go back to the bank. There, interesting enough, you, you have, you see the blue haired lady again. She's moving along with you. And there she tells you, that for every one mole, we'll give you the formula mass of this country. And you look at her like, what is she talking about? But you ignore her, and she gives you all the francs, and you're ready to go. And you spend a couple years there. You meet a Belgian guy, fall in love, have 16 kids. She can afford it. Her husband's a stay-at-home dad. So she, she makes them, and... He takes care of them and cooks and everything. You like that world? That's oh, perfect. All right. So what's the difference between what we learned yesterday and what we learned today? Well, yesterday she had an easy time going from one state to the other. It did not matter where she was transferred here in America, she didn't have to worry about exchanging money, okay? But when she was moved to England, she had to worry about exchanging money. When she had to travel to Europe, she had to worry about exchanging money, okay? What's different this time is that you're going to be given grams, grams, that is like a dollar. That is like a pound. It is currency that is good for a particular nation, but will not work for all the other nations. Uh, you cannot spend a gram of carbon dioxide in oxygen lamp. It just doesn't work. But what you need to remember is her European vacation because... She had a bunch of pounds, but in order to go on vacation, in order to travel through all those countries, what did she have to convert her pounds to? Euros. Euros is the unit that all those other countries accepted. They would not accept the English pound. They will not accept the Belgian franc. They will accept the euro. Think of the mole 
as being the euro in the chemistry world. So when we start these questions, it'll be in a particular country with a particular currency called Graham. First thing you need to do is go to the bank and there you will exchange all your grams for the international unit, which is mole. Then you need to be wise and not make the same mistake that Reagan did. Get on Google, get into the equation, look at the cost of living differences. In other words, what we learned last night. Then we're in the nation in Belgium, People are making fun of you because you're still using the euro, I mean the mole. You need to convert your mole to the currency of that land. Okay? I call it think equals think. Why? Because the first thing you do is you use the think system. You deal with that blue haired old lady, which always told you for one mole, I will exchange the formula mass of that country. So the first step is to use the think system, then look at the cost of living difference. That's what I call equation because that's where you get the cost of living difference. And then go back to the blue haired old lady and find out how to convert all your euro slash moles into grams, into grams. All right. I'll do the first one with you, and then the second one I'll let you do, and then we'll check at the end. Two questions. You do this the same way. Once you learn the pattern, it's easy. You do it the same way every time. All right, let's do it. 96.1 grams of propane. Let's focus on that. What does that mean? These questions will always give you a balanced equation and they'll give you a gram amount. When you see that gram amount, you need to be thinking, ah, this is how much money I have in this land. So you start your train track right there. What does that mean? That means you have $96 and 10 grams in propane land. How much money will you have in the land they want you to convert to? Read the question. What land do they want you to go to? Bobby. Oxygen. Okay. So in order to learn how to do this, you need to remember Reagan. Before Reagan traveled to oxygen land, she must do two things. What's the first thing? Yes. No, that's the second thing. What's the first thing? Go to the bank. And there she will see the little blue haired lady who will tell her the exchange rate. And the exchange rate is for every how many moles? One mole of this country, it will be the formula mass of this country. Okay, three carbons at a price of $12 is 36.0. Eight hydrogens at a price of one is eight. 36 plus eight is 44. The formula mass for this country is 44.0. This is what I call think, because we're using the think system to convert to moles. So now all our currency is in moles. Now you all are concentrating like you've never concentrated before, because this is easy. But if you daydream, you're going to be lost. Okay. Now, Bobby, now that we have all our money 
in a unit that you can use to travel anywhere in Europe, what do you do? Yes, the cost of living difference. And what is that cost of living difference? One, two, five. So if you are in propane land, what would normally cost you one mole will cost you five moles. And now we have turned the corner and we're ready to travel. And we do, we travel to oxygen land and we have a pocket full of moles. You okay, Maddie? You're not writing anything down, which is worrying me. Oh, you have this down, good. Okay. <clears throat> we have a pocket full of moles in oxygen. Do you remember the next part of Reagan's story once she got to the country she was to be working in? No, the country that she was Belgium, the country that she was going to be working with. Do you remember? Yes. Okay, and what happened with the apartment manager? She'd looked down on her money. Yes. Yes. Okay, she was made fun of for having this international unit of mole. So she goes back to the bank in order to convert all her moles in oxygen to grams in oxygen. And what does the little blue haired lady that she was surprised to see tell her? For one mole, we'll give you the Sierra is correct, the formula mass. Oxygen is 16 times two is 16. All right, warm up those calculators. Calculate with me. You ready? Okay, so 96.1, don't bother multiplying by one. It's gonna give you the same answer. So when you go down, you divide. Divide by 44. Hit enter. No, no. Hit enter. It'll give you 2.18, right? Okay, now when you shift over to the right, it's multiplied. So multiply by five. Hit enter. Did you get 10.9? Okay, good. Divide by down. Well, dividing by one is not going to make much of a difference. Multiply across. Do we multiply? Yes. Multiply by 32. Divide by one. You don't have to. So I got 349.7. Is that what you got? So, what does that mean? That means bad news for Reagan, because if she's used to spending $96, how much will she have to spend in that next country? 350 bucks. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And that's the real world. I mean, every country has its cost of living. So, yes, sir. You've never seen an old lady that has bluish silver hair. They're there out there. Just keep your eyes open. I've kind of seen it like that too, but all right. Let's review. Go see the little blue haired lady to convert your grams into the international unit of mole. And she'll always give you one mole for the formula mass. Then do your research. Look at the balanced equation. What is the cost of living difference? It is five to one. See that? Five to one. 
What's the only time you look at the equation? The middle step. The middle step. So you do not put, this is always one. That is always one. This is always formula mass. This is always formula mass. This always comes from the equation. Same pattern over and over and over again. Okay? Any questions? Yes, sir. Where? I don't see 12. Oh, my periodic table tells me that carbon is 12. Okay. There it is. If you get stuck, look at mine. Do it on your own. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, I corrected this in my honors class. This should be silver chloride. Please make that correction. Silver. Oh, I'm sorry. Calcium chloride. Calcium chloride. Calcium chloride. All right. Look for how much money you have. What? How much solid? Which one of these two is the solid? Look on your solubility chart. How much solid is formed? Is it calcium nitrate? No, because nitrates are all soluble. Is it silver chloride? Does that form a solid? Yes. No, I told you to make this correction. Silver nitrate reacts with calcium chloride. What? What for? But nine plus five is 14. Oh, yeah, it's 143.4.
That's what I get for doing math in my mind. Okay, did you all see where I got everything? Let's review. 25 grams of silver nitrate. It goes right there. You gotta convert all your grams into moles. And it's always one mole divided by the formula mass. Always. One mole is always up there Formula mass is always down there. So when you add up one silver, one nitrogen, and three oxygens, you get 169.9. Next step, look at your balanced equation. Two silver nitrates, and you're traveling to silver chloride. So that is where I got the two to two. And then you go visit the little blue haired lady again. And she will always give you for one mole, the formula mass. Notice this time mole is on the bottom so that we can cross out everything crosses out. Moles has to be on the bottom so that we can cross out and you get grams on top. All right, two questions done exactly the same. You have homework where you will be doing exactly the same thing. The only thing that's going to be different is the chemicals and the amounts. All right.